Do you know that your body is able to detect changes to the environment? And our body is able to respond to these changes. Did you know that our body has two types of stimuli? They are called the external stimulus and the internal stimulus. Stimuli from the external environment include light, sound, smell, surrounding temperature, pressure, and touch. Well then, what are the examples of the stimulus from the internal environment? They include blood osmotic pressure, changes in the body temperature, and changes in the blood sugar level. Hmm, I wonder what is the sequence of the coordinating system in the human body? So, what is the sequence of this complex system? First of all, a stimulus, either internal or external, will be detected by receptors in our bodies. These signals are sent through the sensory neurons to the integration center in the form of nerve impulses. In the case of an external stimulus, it will be sent to the brain, while if it's an internal stimulus, it will be sent to the cardiovascular control center in the medulla oblongata. A response will be triggered and the nerve impulses will be sent through the motor neurons, which are the muscles and the organs, and it produces a response. Wait, talking about receptors, how many types of receptors do we have in our body? So, there are basically six types of receptors. Firstly, chemoreceptor, which is the stimulus of chemical substance. Examples of chemoreceptors are taste bud, which are sensitive to chemicals in the mouth. There is also mechanoreceptor, which detects the change in stimulus such as touch, vibrations, and sound from the external and internal environment. Wow, it's so hot in here. I'm sweating. Um, why do I sweat? Oh, well, that's because we have thermoreceptors. Our thermoreceptors are stimulated by temperature, meaning it can detect any changes in the temperature and carry out suitable adaptations. So for example, if our surrounding temperature is too hot, then our thermal receptors will be stimulated and our sweat glands will produce sweat to cool down the body. On the other hand, our photoreceptors can detect any changes in the intensity of light. So for example, if you're in a dark room, our photoreceptors will detect the absence of light and thus our pupils will dilate so that we can see clearer and better. Whereas if you're in a bright room, our photoreceptors will detect the abundance of light and thus our pupil will constrict itself. Ouch, my toe hurts. Wait, why do we feel pain? That's because you have a nociceptor. Nociceptor is a receptor that's sensitive to changes in pressure. They are found in a variety of organs such as skin, bones, muscles, and so on. For example, if you step on a Lego, nociceptor on your skin of your toe are stimulated, causing them to send a signal to the brain through peripheral nerves to the spinal cord. That's why you will feel painful when the Lego hurts you. Lastly, let's talk about the final receptor which is the baroreceptor. receptor. Same with mechanoreceptor, it is located in the aortic arch and carotid sinus. For example, when we stand up, the decrease of blood pressure is sensed by baroreceptor due to the decrease in tension. Therefore, it decreases the firing of impulse. Wow, talking about those receptors makes me wonder the necessity of rest. Now, let me explain the necessity of response to stimuli. So, why do organisms have to respond to stimuli? Well, response to stimuli is very important for the survival of organisms. For example, birds. Birds migrate when they sense changes in the climate. But, do you know that? Response to stimuli is part of the body's nervous system. Alright, the human nervous system is made up of a network of nerve cells or neurons. This system is divided into two main subsystems, which is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system includes the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system consists of 12 pairs of cranial nerve and 21 pairs of spinal nerve. 
the peripheral nervous system is then subdivided into the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. The autonomic control involuntary action of internal organs, blood vessels, smoke and cardiac muscles, the somatic control involuntary action of skin, bones and cellular muscles. The two systems function together by way of the nerve from the peripheral nervous system entering and becoming part of the central nervous system. Speaking about the brain, do you know its structure? Do you know what is the largest structure in your brain? Let me tell you about it. It is cerebral. It is the largest and also the most complex structures which present in the frontal part of the brain. The surface is folded to increase the surface area to hold more nerves. It is a center that controls voluntary actions, memory, and even our behavior. The cerebrum receives information and stimulus from the receptor, and next, the information is analyzed, integrated, and correlated to produce sensory perception. Response is determined and instructions are given to the effectors. Finish talking about the cerebrum. I would like to ask you another question. Do you ever wonder why we can walk in a straight line without falling down to the ground? The cerebellum in our brain helps us to maintain body balance and coordination of muscle contractions for body movement. But there is an anterior in the cerebellum. I wonder what it is. It's called the medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata is a long stem black structure. The function of medulla oblongata is to control involuntary actions such as heartbeat, breathing, food digestion, muscle contraction, blood pressure, peristasis, coughing, sneezing, and swallowing. Wait, I heard that there is something called master gland. I wonder where is it? Hey, did you know the pituitary gland is referred to as the muscle gland? Well, here's a peak of a pituitary gland. Well, it was located at the base of the hypothalamus. And have you wondered why the pituitary gland is called as the muscle gland? This is because it controls the activity of most hormone secreting glands on all over our body. Moving on, let's talk about the last structure of our brain, which is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus regulates our body temperature, our blood pressure, and our water balance. And it also senses our thirst, our hunger, and our fatigue. Now, let's talk about the spinal cord. Spinal cord is made out of white matter and grey matter. In a cross section, the grey matter actually looks like a letter H. Grey matter consists of mainly cell bodies of neurons and is surrounded by white matter. White matter consists of axons of neurons that is covered by middle shift that extends up and down the spinal cord. I wonder what are the other structures of this spinal cord. There are dorsiroid and also dorsiroid ganglion. For dorsiroid ganglion, it is a cluster of neurons in dorsiroid of the spinal nerve. And here's the picture of dorsiroid and dorsiroid ganglion. We can see that the sensory neuron cell bodies in the dorsiroid are clustered together. Moving on, dose root. Dose root contains the axon of sensory neurons that sends nerve impulse from the sensory receptors to the spinal cord. Mm, I am pretty sure that there are two more structures, but I cannot remember. Hmm. Don't worry, I remember. They are the spinal nerve and ventral root. The spinal nerve extends from the spinal cord through two short branches or roots, which are the dorsal root and ventral root. The spinal nerve contains the sensory neuron and motor neuron. The ventral root contains the motor neuron, so it can sense nerve impulse from spinal cord to the effector. 
that is all about the spinal cord. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you want to know about neurons in a nervous system, please click here to watch part 2. Thank you.